Hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and I have a, the second birdhouse in my bird abode series with the monthly birdhouses, and this one is for May. This one is called May Flowers, and I've done this one with the Secret Gar Garden Collection from Graphic 45. Now this one is essentially a box with a lid, so the roof comes off, and then down inside are tags. So the mini album, per se, is kind of built into this one. So this is going to be just a single video with the tags included on this video and not two separate ones. The tags then slip out. We've got some little accordion folds on the sides to, to um, keep these guys all in line inside of the box. So those will all fit just nifty inside of our box or our birdhouse and then our lid goes on. So super simple to make. It's kind of got a fun and interesting roof line on it, but really quite simple on how it all goes together. So let me show you how to go about do the, doing that then. So, so to start out with, you're going to have, excuse me, four rectangles. And I've got to cut apart, but I'm putting it kind of all back together, kind of like a puzzle to show you how it all goes together. Now the instructions for the cutting all the dimensions and such for the cutting of the chipboard, the paper, the tags, the mats, all of that is on a pattern that I do have available over on my website or, or um, yeah, over on my store website, which is www.followthepapertrailwithlaura.com. You can also find a link on my blog at lauradenisondesigns.com that will take you right to it. So to start with, you're going to have four um, pieces of chipboard. You're going to start out where you're going to cut angles for the roof line. Now this is not something that's complicated. You're first going to mark the center line of the width of the chipboard and then you're going to measure down on each side as it specifies and then you're just going to connect the dots to cut away triangles and that's going to form the line of your roof. Next up, you're going to measure up from this edge and cut. So this is going to give you your lid the part that removes off and this is the side of your birdhouse. So that our lid fits over the body of the birdhouse, we're going to be cutting a quarter of an inch away of each one of these bases so that it is a quarter of an inch smaller than our lid and our lid will then slip right down over the body of our birdhouse. You'll have four of these, one for each side. So to start with, we're going to go ahead and set aside our roof for a moment while we cover our sides with our pattern paper. As I said, you do have four sides. Two of the sides, we're going to leave just the plain chipboard. We're going to cut paper to the same size as our chipboard. So we'll have two pieces the same size. Two of them are going to have tabs on each side, a half inch tab to help connect our pieces all together. So we're going to go ahead and attach the pattern paper to our one side of our chipboard. It's going to be cut at the top and bottom edges at the edge of the chipboard, but on the sides we're going to have a half inch tab. And then we'll have two of those. So two of them are going to have the paper not attached, two of them with it attached with a tab on each side. So how we're going to then put it together to form a box is I've got some strong adhesive on here. You could also use glue. So we're going to glue these guys to these tabs. Now the gap that you want to have there is, is equal to two thicknesses of your chipboard. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you took two layers of your chipboard and set that down in between, that's the size the gap that you want have between your chipboard and that allows it to fold without straining your paper um, which can contribute to cracking. So I'm going to peel the paper backing off of these guys. I've done enough of these I can eyeball this pretty quickly. So I'm just going to, but if you need to measure feel free to do that. So attaching that to that tab then we're going to alternate with tabs, without tabs, with tabs. So we'll then apply this one to the next one. Now one of the things, if you have a directional paper, is you want to make sure <laughs> that they're going the same direction, otherwise you're going to have one of them upside down. So I'm 
attach that. Again, if you need to use two thicknesses, a little shim to go in between, you know, feel free to do that. I just, I tend to eyeball it just because I've done it so many times now. All right, so then this last one is going to attach like so, so they're all in a row. And it'll look like this on the back side to where they're alternating. We're going to then bring this guy around and it's going to attach with this one. And you should be able to just fold it over like so and you'll have that same gap. That way you know it's nice and square. Making sure everybody lines up. Go ahead and stick that down. So now we have an open box, open top, open bottom. So we can then attach these guys onto the sides. I went to refill my ATG right before I started filming and I realized I was out of ATG tape. So we're just gonna use glue stick to stick this down. Works just as well. Again, making sure you're you're going in the right direction. It's not upside down or something. Looks like I need to trim this. It's a little bit long, so just take my craft knife. Trim that off. Now we'll do the same with this other piece that I already have cut and ready to go. right down in there, line this up, and it should fit just inside those edges. Stick that down, trim that little sliver off that I need to, because that would make me crazy. So actually now I have the body of my birdhouse pretty much ready to go. So now we're going to work a little bit on the roof. We have four of these triangles, remember that we trimmed off of the top. Now two of them, just like we did on the base, two of them are going to have not have pattern paper attached to them, but we're going to cut pattern paper to match them exactly, but they are not attached, so we'll set those aside. Next we have two more that have half inch tabs on the straight sections. So two with tabs, two without, and we're going to form a circle with these the same way we did for the body of our um, album. Now I didn't get the tape put on these, so let's put that on lickety split quick here. And I like to use a strong adhesive or a liquid glue that dries. Um, and you just It's going to be stronger. Since this is what's kind of holding your whole thing together, you want to make sure you're using a good quality um, adhesive. So we're going to do the same sort of thing, same sort of gap in between that two thicknesses on my chipboard kind of gap. And we're going to alternate with tabs and without tabs. Top is this one. Off the one side, make sure I'm still on camera. Set that down with that gap. Fold this over and line those up. And it should line up to stick right down. And again, we then have a square kind of crown shape. Now we can go ahead and attach these to those two sides that are, and I just realized I have this sound, oh, no, the sand isn't working. Maybe it is. Let's see, does that sound better? Uh-oh, I hope my sound has been okay for you guys while I've been doing this. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do this all over again, and I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to stick this guy. I use my Ustream setup to do my YouTube videos now, but I forgot to do the sound. I just don't. I just record and don't broadcast when I'm doing it. All right, so then we attach this guy to this side. All right, so then this should just slip right over the top. Whoops! 
but we don't want it to do that. <laughs> we don't want it going all the way down. So what I've done is then I have taken two inch and a quarter squares that I've cut on the diagonal in order to form some little braces. I'm also going to measure up inside. Let me get this marked inside and then I will show it to you because I know you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing inside. I'm going to come up about, I guess it's in the pattern. I suppose I should look. Let me put the pattern up here on my computer so I can see. I want to give you the right dimensions. Um, going to come up. I have it as a half an inch. You can go come a half inch, three quarters of an inch, somewhere around in there. Um, just want to stay below where it, the angle cuts off. This is just so that you put place it in approximately, as long as it's consistent all the way around, whether it's a half inch, three quarters of an inch, doesn't much matter. All right, so I've got it marked down inside. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some glue. I didn't check this glue beforehand to make sure that it's going to flow. Of course, it's not. Why does it always do this? Only on camera. It never acts up like this when I'm nobody's here. <laughs> oh, the law of glue. So we're going to glue this along these edges. And we're going to stick it in on those lines that I have marked to form little braces like so. Okay, so we're going to do that with all four of them. It's going to also help keep it square as well as provide, provide the stop so that our lid does not slide right over the top. And we'll work our way all the way around, put all four of them on. Doing a qu quick and kind of sloppy job, but you know what? It's not going to show, so it's not seriously critical. Make sure everybody's sticking on. So those braces are in and that's going to prevent your lid from going down too far and so that'll stop that from happening. Okay, so next up we're going to take our paper. It's not a chipboard roof, it's a paper, it's a cardstock roof. So you're going to cut a piece of cardstock that's 8 by 8. You're going to score and fold it <coughs> to the pattern you want your roof to be, to the outside on the horizontal and vertical edges. And you're, So you're going to fold it in half both directions so that it's rectangular. You're also going to score and fold it on the diagonals. Now these need to be valley folds so the inside of our, our roof is going to be on the outside when we fold it. And that will give us what are called valley folds on the diagonals. We have mountain folds on the quadrants, valley folds on the diagonals. As you can see, that forms the line of our roof. But we don't want this much overhang on these sides. So what we're going to do is I've marked on that line, I've come in three quarters of an inch and marked a point on that line. I'm then going to connect from the corner to that point and back out to this corner. And I'm going to trim my paper on that line. You can use your craft knife or draw it and cut it with your scissors as I'm doing right here. And, whoops, and you're going to do that on all four sides to, fo to form this folded roof line. Go ahead and trim that. Didn't do a very clean cut right there. So cut all the way around. 
nice and easy. Now I have a green roof on this one. So you want to make sure you're doing accent colors and such. You really only need three different papers to do this project. You need your roof paper, your side paper, and the the roof the side paper that's on the roof that lifts off. Okay. So there now is our our roof line all ready to go. So if we take our roof piece, this is going to fit right down on there just like so, clean as a whistle, nifty nifty slick. And you in just a minute we'll go ahead and get this um, glued on there as well. Now to form the little eyebrow roof lines as they're called, these little brow roofs, we're going to be cutting some chipboard pieces and again covering them with pattern paper. So I've already got, there's five of them, I already went ahead and did those off camera. But what you're going to do is you're going to take long skinny rectangles of chipboard and cut it on the diagonal to form two long skinny rectangles with each piece. You're then going to cover them with your pattern paper the same as your roof paper and again allowing a gap in between the two pieces so that this can fold. Now these pieces then are going to fold and glue to the side of our um, roof thing. It's easier to do this without the roof glued on, so that's why I do these first. Now the side you're going to glue down is not this straight side. That's the side that's out. This is the side. These angled pieces are the side that are going to glue down. So we're going to glue them down so that these two points right here meet the corner points here at the bottom. And they're just going to glue down. I'm going to get at least one of them on. We may not do all of them on camera. Oh, what the heck, let's go ahead and do that. My glue's working. I don't want to upset the glue gods. I need that's on the excess on the outside. Go ahead and wipe that off. Stick that down to where those corners match up. Hold it in place for a second until it kind of engages, and then we'll go to the next one. And you'll do that for four of them here on this roof. The fifth one is going to go over um, the entryway into the birdhouse so that it defines the entrance but also kind of tells everybody where the front is. So again, attach that down. Go to our next one. So now we're at a bit of an angle. But by matching up those corners, that kind of determines the angle at which these, the roof line is. So you don't have to figure any math out. It just lines up with those corners down there. Hold it in place for just a second till it grabs hold. Depends on your glue. This is the quick dry glue. So it dries pretty quickly and it will hold in place. Some glues may, whoops, and then it, 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 it pops off. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> on that one side, of course it does. So hold that. Stick that one down. I probably would normally hold that for a little bit longer. So let's just hang on to it for a sec. Count to like five elephants or something. And then it generally will stay in place. So that puts our little eyebrows on. And those were quick and easy. And this guy needs some glue because he is not wanting to stay. There's always one in the bunch that doesn't want to cooperate and wants more extra attention. Kind of like kids, isn't it? So, all right. So now, now that we got our little eyebrow roof lines on, we can go ahead and glue our roof on. So we're going to add glue on all of these angled edges. See if I can do this without shaking too much. Too much coffee today! That Monday morning, trying to stay awake. Alrighty, so you go around. Again, doesn't have to be perfect and tidy. Nobody's going to look up inside the eaves. And if they do, 
they're going to see a little not so perfect. Okay, so we're going to take and just slip this down over the top. Everything should just set right in. Make sure everybody's stuck on there. Being that it is in out of chipboard, it just kind of molds right onto where it needs to go. And that gives us our roof line that then fits right over the top of our birdhouse. Now for this last one, we need to have, let me see if I can do this, lay this down to where it stays. We need to have the roof on because this one is going to glue down so that it's centered. And pick whichever side you want to be your front because that's the side this one's going to glue on to. The top is centered just at the base of where the lid hits, or just under it, and these points here come out to the sides. So I want to make sure that it's on there. This is easier to do if you can stand it up, but I want you guys to see how I'm doing this. So it sets up inside there. I'm going to center this. Eyeballing it for me is okay. Line up the points here, come over to the edge and that sticks down and that's going to define where our entrance quote unquote <laughs> into our birdhouse is so there's a essentially get, it's getting close to being done see how quick and easy this one is so I'm going to set that aside and we're going to create the base so you're going to have a base piece and you're also going to have four pieces that form the sides now just like we did before two of them are going to have tabs on the ends to form that open ring but this one's going to little have, have a little bit of difference because we need to attach a top to it. So we're going to have tabs along the top edge as well on two of them. So two are going to have side tabs and top tabs. And two of them are going to, when this gets attached, have only the top tab, tab and it's going to be flush on the sides. So what the first step is, though, is attaching these tabs to these or these chipboard pieces to these tabs. Again, allowing that gap and alternating tabbed and untabbed. So we will be forming a ring once again. And then if we fold this back on itself, lining up our bottom edges. This can come down and you'll have that same gap. So then we have our base sides all put together. I can then attach these pieces that have the tabs attached to the top. So I'm going to line it up along the bottom and attach this on there. Do the same on this other side. Now, I want to have a little, what I call tabbing the corners, cut each of these sides at a slight angle so that it reduces some of the bulk and overhang at the corners. So essentially, we have this pretty much ready to go. Next thing that's going to happen is our base is going to slip down inside and we're going to wrap these edges over and attach them down um, to form the top of the base and then we'll cover it over with pattern paper so I need to add some of my adhesive tape or glue whichever works best for you your glues and adhesive are a very subjective thing it has to be what you like to use and what works best for your your um, climate because climate can definitely affect your adhesives so let's get that all stuck down what I find is if I start with one edge, stand this up so that I can start with one edge. I'll hold it up here so you can see it on camera here in just a second. With the proper gap in there. Again, you want that same sort of gap so that your paper folds without being stressed too much. So then we can fold that over and do the opposite sides or the adjacent side, whichever works for you. 
and you're wanting to butt that seam up. You don't want to overlap. And sometimes if you start this fold a little first, you're easier to fold over the top. But you want to butt the seam up and not have it overlapping. And wrap that around. We'll give it a good rub down here in a second once we get all four sides wrapped and down. And wrapped. So we've got all four sides and we can give it a good rub on the inside make sure everybody's stuck down well. Might throw a little glue in there here where it's lifting off a little bit but we can also do that in a sec at the end kind of lift it up a little bit so stick that down so that's our base I then have a coordinating solid paper that I'm going to go ahead and put on the top edge so I'm just going to go ahead stick this down with some score tape because my birdhouse is going to be attaching to this I want this to be a sturdy attachment and not just my my glue stick because as I said my um birdhouse is actually attached to this. Let's see if we can make this roll last. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that. See, I was an inch short. So we'll just put a piece of half inch on there. Isn't that always the way? And, and trust me, if you do videos, they'll only happen <laughs> while you're in the middle of a video or, or a live show or something. It never seems to happen when I'm just sitting here. Or maybe I just don't notice it when I'm sitting here doing this all by myself. It's just funny how that all works out. Alrighty, so get that stuck down and then we'll be ready to glue our birdhouse down. So that gets stuck down in place. So there's my base. Next step is, so that doesn't fall off, I'm going to glue now you could use construction strips, which are one inch strips scored in half down the length and use those on the inside for a little bit more secure rather than the glue if you prefer. Um, I have just glued this on. And you want to center it in both directions. So you should have about half an inch all the way around. And we'll just stick that down. So then our base is on. Now, if you want to put, like I did on this one, a fence, there's several die cuts, fences, or um, punch fences that you can do. Here's a fence on this one. I did a um, the iron gate kind of like fence that I'm going to probably go ahead and put on this one. So it doesn't have to be a fence fence, it can also be an iron fence. And I'm not going to go ahead and put that on. What I do want to do next is show you how to go about doing the inside portion. Um, now, because the tags are in there, you can't see all the way down in. I'm just doing three inches down with pattern paper to cover on the inside where it shows. So I'm just going to do, along the front and back, I have it just three inches deep by the width of the wall. Now I trimmed a little bit off so that it would fit down inside easily. So just going to stick that down inside so that it's flush up at the top. I'm going to do that on the other. That was along the back and then I'm doing this along the front. Again, flush at that top edge. Okay, now along the sides we're going to do some accordion folds. So I've taken a piece of cardstock, the same height as what I did here, and I've scored this every half an inch. These pieces are going to attach inside so that the tabs here on each end are flush against the side, and then I'll have glue on the, um, the little valleys and glue those down. And that's going to form, and I have this backwards <laughs> inside, it goes in this way, because you want, you're going to have five and I show a photo of this in the, um, the pattern. But you want five little slots. Essentially, um, in, in terms of a little bit of history on the mini albums, accordion folding was one of the very first methods that were used of creating multiple pages to form a book. 
And what happened in those days is these pieces were wider. Rather than the half inch, they were page size. And then they were attached back to back. So it formed pages. And that was called a butterfly book. Methods similar to this have been used for binding as well by doing the accordion folds and then attaching your pages to narrow strips like this or, you know, the full strips. Um, but this makes uh, also a great way for, for forming slots along the side. So those are going to get attached down on each side. Let me show you where they're already attached in this one so that you can see. So you can see how they are attached at each end and then each of these little valleys is glued to the side as well and that creates the slots to keep those separated so that their embellishments don't hang up on each other on the inside. So I also want to show you how I made the tags that fit inside. These are folded, they're card-like tags so that out of one tag you have four photos as well as some room for some additional flower embellishments. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to cut um, your tags to the size it says in the pattern and they're going to get folded then in half. This is the narrower dimension by the taller dimension. When you fold them in half, I then have marked similar to how we did it for our roof line in order to get angled tops. I've measured down on each side and found the center line and I'm going to go ahead and cut along that line. Now, if you may have noticed on the tags that I've done, they're layered so that the, low, the, the point on the front is lower than that in the back so that the layering of the embellishment shows. So then on the front, I've come down 3 quarters of an inch and connected to those same corners. I'll go ahead and trim that. And that is how you get that layered peak onto your tags and then those tags slip in. You add you can add mats, flowers to both both sides of each section of it. One of the things I do want to talk a little bit about what I did here then on the outside is I've embellished it with punched flowers as well as purchased and manufactured flowers. You can cover it with a combination like I did or you can put it all purchased, all punched. If you love making flowers, it can be fabric, ribbon, any kind of flower goes. Put it in an arrangement that is pleasing to you. Um, you also want to go ahead and put the um, a black circle or a dark circle, punch that. Maybe add some matting here. I've done a scalloped and then a little bit larger circle with a black circle. You'll also want to add a little um, wooden peg as the perch, I've added a piece of the ribbon as well for the perch. Now for the punched um, flowers, pretty much any kind of punches. These are probably my favorite, the daisy, the EK Success daisy and mod flower. And I've got those in multiple sizes. The daisy I actually use three sizes on. And then I also have a little piece that I use in the center of the daisies. Now to shape those, there's multiple ways that you can shape them. You want to have to start with some sort of a soft surface. The back of your mouse pad works great. To shape, you can use a stylus, a ball stylus, and just kind of run it over, especially with the mod flower. By running it around the edges, it shapes them and cups them slightly. With the daisy, I like to take a straight edge surface this is my bone folder and just press it and it gives shape to the flowers by using that straight edge. But just kind of experiment. I know there's a zillion or two different ways of making flowers and just go you can Google it or YouTube search it and find all sorts of ways so that you can come up with shaped flowers. Or it's not cheating <laughs> to buy flowers either. So anyway, that is May flowers, the second in our series of bird, bird abodes, as I call them. Let me give you a quick sneak peek of June's now that I have it done as well. 
I won't show you the inside the mini album yet but so this is May next month coming up the first week of June is hats off and this is kind of a Mad Hatter style top hat mustaches which are popular um, using a little screw as the perch and the um, metal nuts for the little feet the box opens up the mini album is inside and reaches up into the hats so stay tuned first week of June for hats off and that will be coming up as I said that first week but until then we've got our May flowers ready to go so keeping those birds happy and healthy and well um, housed <laughs> so thanks for joining me and we'll see you for the the next installment of bird abodes thanks a bunch for joining me Bye now.